Good Monday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today to share from God's Word. Feel free to hit the like button or comment on social media wherever you see it because it's good for the algorithm as we get the Word of God out together as co-laborers in Christ. And today, the thought for the day goes to the final chapter in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. When I came to verse 20 and 21, we have what's called a benediction. A benediction is basically a blessing that a preacher or a teacher uh, who uh, is like a pastor in a church will give at the end of a service. That's what a benediction is. It's a blessing at the conclusion of a service. And there's some benedictions in the Bible that your preacher or pastor might use, like this one in Hebrews 13 verses 20 and 21. And Sometimes they'll use another one that's in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. And today, when we look at Hebrews 13, verses 20 and 21, the blessings that we see is that we have in Jesus Christ a shepherd, a great shepherd. A shepherd is one who looks out for their flock. In the Old Testament, we are told in Ezekiel chapter 34 that there were a lot of false shepherds that didn't really look after their sheep in verses 1 to 10. And then in verse 11 in Ezekiel chapter 34, we see God intervening, coming in and saying, I will be their shepherd. Because the shepherds that God had ordained to watch over the people of Israel were failing them. My friends, today there are a lot of false shepherds. Christ warned us there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. In the last days, we're told that in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, there'll be a great falling away. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 to 4, reminds us that a true shepherd, someone who teaches you, will rebuke you, correct you oftentimes, because in that context in 2 Timothy chapter 4, many people by nature just want someone to give them what they want to hear. They want to, they want to have a little sugar in their coffee, so to speak. They don't want to have the castor oil. They don't want to have something that's actually really going to be beneficial to you. I have found in life that a lot of times the things that are most healthy for me to eat physically don't taste the best. And those things that are really bad for me are those that really taste good to the, to the physical taste buds. And it's the same thing spiritually. In the Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5 and 6, it says, Open rebuke is better than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. My friends, be careful who you listen to on TV or here on the internet. A true shepherd or a true teacher is going to correct you, rebuke you. The word of God, when it's faithfully proclaimed, is like a sword. We read that a little earlier in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. The word of God will cut you open, expose your heart for who you are. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he walked this earth some 2,000 years ago, said in Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 and 13, I did not come for the healthy, but I came for the sick. I did not come to call righteous people, but sinners to repentance. And it was often the most lowest people in society of his time, the derelicts of society, so to speak, the degenerates, um, that came to him in saving faith. It wasn't the religious people. It wasn't the people who thought they had it all together. It was those that saw their need. See, that's what the word of God will do. Romans chapter three, verse 20 tells us that the law, God's word, will expose us for who we are, sinners. Galatians chapter three, verse 24 reminds us that the word of God is a tutor. A tutor is one who teaches you. The word of God teaches us our need for Christ. And that's what a true shepherd will do. Christ, who is our great shepherd, the shepherd who gives his life for the sheep, as we read in John chapter 10, verse 11, is one who also, while he walked this earth, did not sugarcoat his message. You know, a lot of times people will say, you know, communities, they need Jesus. They had, I read somewhere on the internet where a local church had a Easter fest for the people. The pastor was saying, I want people to come to Jesus, but he was having Easter bunny hops and, and, and egg hunts. And uh, it was just a grand old time. 
My friends, listen, there's nothing wrong with having a good old time, but that's not the message of the cross. That's not the message of Easter. It's not the message, more importantly, of Resurrection Sunday. The message that we were supposed to bring yesterday and we should bring every day is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. We are to preach repentance. We are to tell people in love how sinful they are and that they need Christ. But today we have a lot of teachings that are tickling to the ears as we read in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. People want to have itchy ears. They want to feel good. I've seen fads come and go in my nearly 39 years as a Christian. I've seen the, the name and claim it gospel. I've seen the, the prosperity gospel. God wants you to be healthy. Name it and claim it. God wants you to read the rich. Now the big one is the social justice gospel. This too is a fad that will eventually fade away. The social justice gospel. God wants you to be freed from the, the, the wicked police officer and, and uh, consequences for your actions. How's that going the last few years? When, when A few years ago when they were talking about defunding the police and, and all this other nonsense... Now look at how skyrocketing crime has become in so many parts of our country. My friends, there are false teachers out there. Don't believe everything you hear. A philosopher many years ago said of the American public, 85% of American people think they think, but they don't. I mean, 85% of American people don't think. 10% of American people think they think, but they don't. And only 5% of American people, he found, truly think for themselves. My friends, by, by what the Word of God says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, we are all like sheep. By nature, we will go astray. By nature, we will follow the false prophets. We're attracted to eloquent speakers. Politicians who are the most deceiving like a snake are often the ones that are very cunning in the way they talk. They talk very eloquently. They attract you into themselves. My friends, be careful who you listen to. The ones that you should be listening to is the one who brings the whole counsel of God's word. The Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, said that he did not stop to bring the whole counsel of God's word. That meant words of encouragement, words of edification, building up, but it also meant words of condemnation and guilt for sin and hell. People don't want to hear all that stuff. But... When we come with the Word of God, it should be with a full counsel, being obedient to what God tells us to do, not worrying about the response that people are going to have, not worrying about being popular, not worrying about being rejected by others. Christ himself was rejected. Mark chapter 3, verse 24. Many people, even those closest to him, they thought he was nuts. They thought he was out of his mind. Jesus understands. But let us be faithful to the Word of God, my friends. Be a watchman, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6, warns those who bring the word of God that if they do not become like a watchman, a watchman was one who stood at a tower, looked out to see if enemies were coming. If we do not warn others of what's coming in judgment and hell, God's going to hold us accountable as teachers. Whether it's pastors in a church or someone on the internet like I do here, if I do not bring the whole counsel of God's word, I don't warn people. God's going to hold me accountable. James chapter 3 verse 1 tells us that God holds teachers more accountable. So, But by the grace of God, my friends, it is a reward. It is a blessing. I am humbled that I could come out here each and every day and share God's word. But the word of God being shared should not be entertainment or for my own desire and will, but to be faithful to the whole word of God, the Bible. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Today, I pray you will give many who will listen to this a desire to share the word out to others. May they do it faithfully, Lord God, not worrying about the response, but being obedient to you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you all.